The offense caught all the headlines in 2019, and rightfully so, but it was a improving defense down the stretch that uh, put together truly a juggernaut at LSU from top to bottom, offense, defense, and special teams. We're breaking down the defense for 2020, hoping that there is a season. The SEC seems to be on the side of playing at this point. We got Lon Phillips Sullivan on the line from LSU Odyssey. We invite you to check out his work right there. All right, Lon, ready to break down the defense here. Uh, when when before we started to record, I got to say that I wasn't really thinking. I was just like, okay, who's LSU lost? And then you started running down the players, and I quickly went back to the NFL draft because you just littered the NFL draft with some top players, uh, Grant Delpit, uh, Clavon Chason, and Michael Divinity. A ton of great talent gone, but obviously uh, – some of the best players in college football, beginning with Derek Stingley coming back. Uh, LSU, we, we reloaded as well um, with, with some of the freshmen coming in. It's bolstered uh, a lot of those upperclassmen and filled uh, the holes that, that were missing from, from a lot of those players who went into the draft. Um, but where, where should I start? Should I start at the D-line? Mark? Sure. I know Tyler Shelvin is impressive, uh, one of the best run stuffers in uh, college football. Oh, yeah. I mean, 39 pocket disruptions from the zero nose position. That's unbelievable. I mean, his his job wasn't even to, to disrupt the pocket, really, but it disrupt more of the protections. But here he is disrupting the pocket, getting into the backfield 39 times last season during this 2019 campaign. That's just epic from Tyler Shelvin. You put him at the three tech with inside the DT with a 4-3, uh, the new alignment that, that Pelini is going to be uh, deploying. He shed some weight as well. He's become leaner, meaner. Uh, ooh, he's an interior dictator. This guy, he's going to be a devastator. I don't know. What, I don't know. You know, I, I I won't predict. You know, ten sacks or something like that. But I, you know, I think his effect will be far more uh, subtle and more influential than stats can even begin to quantify. Uh, and that's how. That's where champions are won. And championships are won. And next to him, I, I'm looking at Apu Ika. Sophomore out of my hometown, Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. Uh, East High. This guy was highly recruited. High, you know, Nick Saban was dying for Apu Ika. He was trying to do anything to get him. But Dave Aranda, Pete Jenkins, they beat him to punch. And uh, they got Apu Ika. He had a great freshman year, won the national championship. Um. He played in a lot of big game situations, out of position. Uh, you can play him at the zero nose. You can play him at the three tech. You, you, you know, you you can do a lot of different things with Apu Ika. He can disrupt the the game a lot in a, a lot of different ways. But then behind him, you got Jacoby and Gillery, freshman, and big tanking, the big tank, Jacoby and Gillery, my man. This guy it has fantastic. See, he just has a boundless ceiling. I, I don't I just see legend all over him and Jacqueline Roy, his uh, fellow freshman on the inside. These two are local guys from Louisiana, Jacqueline Roy and Jacoby and Guillory. But I just ever since we, we even started recruiting them and I started watching their film, I just I just felt like, you know, these guys are going to be Tiger legends one of these days, you know, kind of in the same uh, Glenn Dorsey mold. And uh, we'll see. But um, I know I know Coach Orderon is very high on both of those guys, Guillory and Roy. And even though they'll they'll be backing up Ika and Shelvin most likely, um, with Neil Farrell leaving, uh, opting out of the team, uh, opting out of the season this year um, due to COVID, and uh, you know losing uh, you know pass rushers like Marcel Brooks as well, um, Glenn Logan perhaps moving to defensive end, not being an interior guy. Um, you're going to see Guillory and Roy have a lot of playing time this year, I feel. And they're going to have, if, if there is a season, they're going to have to pick up a lot, a lot of slack. But then we move to the outside. And that's where there's been some, uh, some interesting, uh, intriguing questions. People have been wondering, uh, can LSU replicate that awesome pass rush with Caleb Von Chase on from last year? And even that awesome pass rush, it didn't generate too many sacks. We had 11 and a half sacks total as a defensive line 
And then Caleb on chase on, I think had six and a half, eight and a half. So, you know, adding Stevens, uh, three and a half sacks, Damone Clark's three and a half. That's, that's way under par for LSU. So what Bo Pelini is going to try and do with some of these freshman guys is he's going to use their athleticism and, the, and he's going to use their strengths on the outside. So you're going to see B.J. Ojolari and Philip Webb deployed a lot as defensive ends. I know they're freshmen. I know a lot of people, they're just unknown. They're uncertain about these guys. Trust me, they're the real deal. B.J. Ojolari, Philip Webb, you're going to watch them play in the NFL one day. They're fantastic, and they're going to be great for LSU from the outset. And, and that's just those two guys for, to begin with. Behind them, you got Andre Anthony, another guy who's just waiting to pop. He's just waiting to have a big season at LSU. He's always had the physical tools, the physical the physical attributes that are just perfect to succeed in the SEC. But I don't think the three four was right for him. The four three is perfect for his attributes. You got Glenn Logan, who could also he could play DE or DT in this system. Really, you could move him to either or. Glenn Logan, I love what Glenn Logan provides. He's a senior. He's going to have that leadership. I think he's going to be a huge, huge pillar for uh, Bo Pelini to, to lean on. Also, you got Ali Guy, Ali Gay. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. From uh, Gambia, he is 6'5", 270. Uh, absolute, absolute, absolute chronic ambassador of quarterback shame. This dude, he could absolutely wreak havoc. I'm not even kidding. This guy, I, he's unknown. He hasn't played much whatsoever because of academic ineligibility last season. But from the film I've seen, this guy is an absolute freak of nature inside or outside on the defensive line. If we can actually see this guy play football, whew, I think it would be fun because Ali Gay, I think, is an absolute defensive line superstar waiting to happen. Uh, TK McClendon. This guy's a converted tight end. Now he's a defensive end. He's going back to his natural position. And Coach Orgeron, after three spring practices, absolutely loved what he saw from McClendon. That's very interesting to me. He, he, lo- he, he was working with McClendon because he wanted to see if McClendon was up to speed, but McClendon was further ahead than a lot of the freshman guys as far as getting off the snap early, as far as that swim move. Far, you know, he he had a lot a, a toolbox of moves and a toolbox of different uh, ways to play defensive end that were very interesting to order on and kind of unorthodox. But it was because he knew how to read the game. He knew how to react. He just had a lot of interesting instinctual things to his game. Then you got Justin Thomas, a guy who missed the entire season after the Florida game. He only had one tackle in the Florida game, and then you hadn't. You just, you just didn't see him. Well, he's back. He, he's back in the fold. Orgeron is very happy about that. He's gained some weight. He's now shedding some of that weight. Uh, I don't really like talk. I don't feel too comfortable talking about it out of the people's weight. But uh, as far as his, you know, his athleticism, his stability after this long out, that's unquestionable. He, he's, he's, he's looked fantastic even in the walkthroughs, they've said. Sports keep coming back. So does your chance to bet on them with our exclusive wagering partner, BetOnline.ag. Major League Baseball will finally start the summer this weekend as it's in full swing, and there's no shortage of ways to get in on the action. BetOnline has all the odds, futures, and props for you to bet on. And as sports starts to return, BetOnline has sat down with Eddie George from the NFL, Robert Ory, seven-time NBA champ, and Harold Reynolds from Major League Baseball to get their opinions on what it will be like playing without fans in what they've called Fandemic. Visit betonline.ag today to check out all the odds and up-to-date sports news. Don't forget to sign up and take advantage of all the welcome back to sports bonuses. BetOnline, your online wagering experts. Then we move to linebacker. This is a position that Bo Pelini himself coaches. Okay, He brought over Jabril Cox. It was an absolute imperative uh, transfer capture that we got Jabril Cox, just like getting Liam Shanahan, who's now turned out to be our center. It was absolutely imperative that we got Jabril Cox, not only because he's a great linebacker, but because he's a great playmaker. Seven interceptions, four return for a touchdown at FCS, uh, three-time national champion, uh, Notre, uh, North Dakota State. Yeah, North Dakota State. Uh, Jabril Cox was unbelievable there. 100 tackle, 
absolute machine. Behind him, you got at that will position, you got Sam Antoine Sampa. He had 140 tackles while playing with a knee injury in high school in Virginia. This guy's an absolute monster. I really love Sampa. He's probably not going to get too much love, but Sampa is in the mix for playing time. Then you got Philip Webb because I think as a defensive end, he could also offer a lot as a linebacker. He played linebacker a ton in Georgia. Uh, I, I really just I think it was Lan Lanyard High in Georgia where he played. With his height, it is so hard, so difficult for a quarterback to throw around that empirical towering height that I don't I don't see him why you, why you couldn't use him as a linebacker because of just his brilliance and coverage is actually unquestioned if you watch his film. It's Really something to see for a guy of that size. At Mike Linebacker, you got Damone Clark. 49 tackles as a bench player last year on the national championship team. Three and a half sacks. He hit every quarterback from Lawrence Hurts to Timbuktu to, to Hubuktu. You know, he, he, he sacked everybody. He hit everybody. He was a machine in the pressure game. And he started the Bama game over Patrick Queen. The thing is that Patrick Queen made that interception before halftime and just sealed his spot on the team for good pretty much after that. Damone Clark kind of found uh, reps after that a little tough to go by. But before that, Damone Clark and, and after that as well, Damone Clark had a consistent and feverish standard at LSU. And he, he, it's because he followed Devin White as a freshman. He was a study of Devin White, Mark. And uh, you know as well as I do, Devin White is an utter professional, an absolute machine, and um, a really good dude, just through and through. He does everything the right way. And uh, he let Devin follow – I mean, he let uh, Damone follow him. See, I, even, I already called him, called him Devin on accident. He let Damone follow him and, and be kind of his understudy. And it showed 49 tackles and, and the plethora of, of tackles for a loss and, and all the that other stats uh, – his influence was impeccable. Bo Pelini has said he's his Mike linebacker. He's his starting Mike linebacker. That defies right in the face of, of wisdom of everyone saying, oh, Jabril Cox is going to be in that position. I had a feeling Damone would be because of that leadership and because of that side-to-side -side speed. He can do it all from that position. He can be that last man standing, and he can read the game like I, I, he's an absolute freak. I mean, he, he can see it all before it comes. Behind him at Mike Linebacker, you got Ray Thornton. And Ray Thornton, he had that big play recovering the Tua ghost fumble on that first drive against Bama. But he's always been, uh, much like Micah Baskerville, a linebacker that has always been kind of, well, let's see, let's see. He hasn't had that big season yet. And every season, everyone's waiting for him to have that big season. Well, is this that year for Ray Thornton? Behind uh, Damone Clark, it might be difficult to, to even find playing time. And then at uh, Sam Linebacker, we got, uh, you know, this is kind of an open position. Either freshman Josh White could take this position. Antoine Sampa could be moved over here. He's another freshman that I, that I just talked about. Micah Baskerville, who I just talked about, who is that, you know, he, he's a junior, I think, at this point. He had a punt return for a touchdown last year. Didn't play much at, at Linebacker. When I did see him play, he was getting mulled over by, by Najee Harris. Sorry, sorry, Micah. I just got to say the truth. I, the film don't lie. He had an opportunity to get Najee. I mean, this, this happens to everybody. It's okay. It's not just you, Micah. Okay. It's not just you. He had an opportunity to get Micah to make that play. He was in position and he got mulled over by Najee Harris. Okay. So, you know, it was a touchdown and that was a big play for Alabama to come back in that game. Can he make that play this year? Because there's not going to be Caleb on chase on or any of those big guys behind him to, to be right there in position. I believe people like Damone Clark will be in position, but will these some of these other uncertain, un, unknown quantities, will they be there? That's the question. This front seven has a lot of questions due to that. It's, it's kind of a wait and see. A very high ceiling, but just this unknown quantity. And Sam Linebacker in that 4-3, there's just there, – we could even move Jacoby Stevens from strong safety to Sam linebacker, which is something I am actually a little in favor of, of just to shore up that front seven because he's someone who affects so much of the of what goes on in the pass rush, in, in the backfield. 
stopping the screen game, shutting down tight ends or slot receivers even. Jacoby Stevens can do all of that from Sam Linebacker. He is a menace. And he, I, I think they should move him to Sam Linebacker. That's just me. That's just me saying. At safety, you've got so many options. Like I just said, you've got Jacoby Stevens at strong safety. You've got Jordan Tolls, a freshman who is 6'1", 220. A freshman safety who is 6'1", 220. That is a human missile crisis coming right for you, baby. Behind him, you got Cam Lewis. Cam Lewis, he had some great plays in, in coverage against Alabama, but then he got found out for a touchdown by Tua, but I, he's a strong safety. He actually had some pretty damn good coverage on that play. So Cam Lewis, he had some great reps last year. We'll see what he can provide. At free safety, that's a huge position where, where there's a lot of uh, a lot of debate and a lot of uh, a lot of candidates for starting. Todd Harris out all of last year after the Northwestern State game. Could you know he's a candidate for a number eighteen jersey? Could he take Could he take over the free safety spot? I believe so, but at the same time, Coach Orgeron said he wasn't practicing because it wasn't hundred a hundred percent yet. He has to get to 100% before we can, you know, say that he's our, our starting free safety. Until then, Kerry Vincent's our guy. Mo Hampton's also in there. Mo Hampton, he, he started against Oklahoma, actually, in the in the Peach Bowl, if, if you watch. And uh, it was to kind of free up Jacoby Stevens to move ahead and kind of affect things at the line of scrimmage. He was already trusted that much in that big of a moment as a freshman. I think as a sophomore, he'll only be trusted that much more and uh, be given that much more responsibility, especially in those one high safety looks. He's fantastic in that. He's a baseball outfielder. He's got the attributes. Mo Hampton, he is a sophomore who is waiting to pop and explode. I really feel like he could maybe steal a starting spot here. But Kerry Vincent, he's playing for a legacy. He's a senior. I see a lot of big things from him. Four interceptions returning. I mean, overall, this is a DBU line here in 2020 that has 40 passes defended and 13 interceptions returning. I mean, that's that's ridiculous numbers. At the at corner, you got Derek Stingley, of course. That spot is unquestioned, but it's the opposite corner where there's a lot of candidates of who will start alongside Derek Stingley. You've got Cordell Flott. Cordell Flott is the most favored guy. He had a few games where he had uh, pass deflections against Alabama, Ole Miss, Arkansas. Um, he was put in. He was running into the game in some difficult moments last year, uh, in some really close games, and he he turned up really well and actually played fantastically uh, in the stead of uh, Christian Fulton sometimes. But behind him, there's some freshmen that are exciting. You got Eli Ricks, Dwight McLaughlin, Eli Ricks could be he could pull a Stingley if we're able to play football. He could pull a Derek Stingley. He's that talented. He's that good. He's that equipped to deliver the goods. Dwight McGlothern, I, I see him more as maybe a receiver. He, he, he can go both ways, but he's a fantastic DB as well. Uh, he, he's a great, great dude in the air. He can make up ground, just he, he lightning speed. But Eli Ricks, I think, is the guy who's going to challenge Cordell Flott mostly for that spot. Uh, eight interceptions, or I think it was nine, and six returned for a touchdown, including three in one game at Matter Day. I mean, three interception returned for a touchdown by Eli Ricks in one game. That's outrageous. He had three picks while barely even being targeted at IMG last year with a hurt shoulder. And not only that, but Eli Ricks has shown he can make big, big, devastating hits, even while dealing with injury. And so I feel like Eli Ricks is going to be that dude who's going to push for playing time. You could even move Cordell Flott to nickel. And we're gonna, if we're going to be playing games, there's going to be a lot of times we're going to be playing against teams who are you know, using five wide sets and things like that. So you're going to see both of those guys being used. And sophomores, you got Jay Ward and Ray Darius Jones. Both of these guys, I don't know. I don't know. I, I we, we saw great moments from them, but we saw some some iffy moments from them. I, I see more that it's going to be a mix of Flott and Ricks for those starting corner spots at, at, for, for uh, 2020 DBU here at LSU. 
Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love each and every day with the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our mission. That's our goal right here. Lon Phillips Sullivan on the line from LSU Odyssey. And Lon, at times you you let us know who you think has the potential and the possibility to be uh, legendary in the LSU program. I'm thinking, Lon, that you could be legendary if, if you would take one bit of advice from me. I think yeah. take these these nicknames that you have for these guys. You, you've got a litany of them. You know, I'm I just wrote down one: the chronic ambassador of quarterback shame. That's that's phenomenal. You take that list and you submit it to the football team. Okay. Well, I, I hey, I've been I've been in contact recently with some uh, people from LSU. Cody Warsham. We just did an interview with him. Okay. Um, so we've got some uh, some connections, uh, not not too many. Uh, LSU is quite a tight ship as far sure. as that, but we've got we've got some really good sources that have some great team information. And over there on LSUodyssey.com, we've we've been throwing some heat our fans' way. And uh, if you go on to LSUodyssey.com/shop, we have LSU Tigers 2020 Almanac, where we detail and profile every single player on the defense offense special teams we go through the every coach's profile every game and we had to you know we're going through and we're re-editing of course the schedule we're changing the entire 12 game schedule to the new 10 game schedule and uh you know it, it it's something that's really good if you're looking into each player it, it's very insightful and we've been releasing a lot of uh previews of the of that almanac on uh, lsu odyssey.com but yeah lsu.odyssey.com slash shop for that almanac. And, and thank you very much, Mark. Phenomenal. There's your LSU breakdown on defense as we continue to scan the country. We appreciate you stopping by as always, Lon. Thanks, Mark. Go Tigers.